year again, two and a half weeks out from the start of the 76th Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. And today is all about the biggest and the fastest, really flexing their muscles around Sydney Harbour in what is going to be a thrilling race. I'm Gordon Bray and welcome to the start of the 2020 Grinders Coffee Solus Big Boat Challenge. And joining me in commentary is Olympic silver medalist Olivia Price. Olivia, I think it's a case of holding onto our hats today, isn't it? It's going to be a wild day out there today, Gordon. Um, I've already lost my hat. We do have the southerly breeze uh, that came in overnight. It's a little bit cooler than what we were expecting looking at the forecast last week. So it's a great race on our hands. We'll be starting in the main part of the harbour before heading all the way up to the north and doing two and a half laps of the harbour before the finish um, down near the Opera House. And two fierce rivals in the Super Maxis, but contrasting boats. They really are the opposite ends of the spectrum. We do have the skinny boat of Blackjack having, you know, modifications done last year. Very fast in the lighter conditions, but also a little bit easier to manoeuvre in this smaller racetrack of Sydney Harbour. Then you look at Infotrack, the big, big bottom bus that she likes to be called and is uh, first out of the heads the last few years in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. So, you know, opposite ends of the spectrum, making for an exciting race. Well, you and I are going to jump on board the Aero Media camera cat and take you out to the start for live pictures. The Big Boat Challenge has become an institution in the lead up to the Rolex Sydney Hobart. And this afternoon, one yacht will be crowned the champion of our magnificent Sydney Harbour. And we do have a, a lovely, fresh, southerly breeze. Today, we'll not only witness four Grand Prix racing yachts doing battle, but we'll also raise awareness for the CYCA Solus Trust's Safety of Lives at Sea, which supports needy families in the sailing community as well as providing assistance to search and rescue organisations and fostering research and training to improve procedures and equipment for use at sea. And all of that was instigated after the, the tragedies we saw in the, in the 1998 Rolex Sydney Hobart. Now the teams competing today include the two 100 foot Super Maxis, those two celebrated boats, Christian Beck's Infotrack and Peter Harburg's Blackjack. Chasing them all the way around the course will be the smaller Money Penny, skippered by Sean Langman and David Griffiths, Whisper. Now the fleet is in countdown mode, prepping for the start. Just over 10 minutes of this harbour battle to go before we get underway. Well, alongside me again, Olivia Price, Olympic silver medalist, match racing champion. Olivia, we're holding onto our hats, but we're going to see a pretty fast race, I think, and a very lively one. Oh, it's definitely going to be lively, Gordon. Um, one of the things we've seen uh, being out here for the last half hour or so is the wind died down a little bit. So there were gusts of, you know, up to 26 knots out there uh, earlier this morning with that southerly breeze. That's starting to abate. Now there are still uh, some white caps out here. So we're seeing gusts of anywhere up to 20 knots. So exciting racing, but still manageable conditions in this short racetrack. And, and just looking at the course, uh, it's going to be a drag race. Uh, Obviously, InfoTrack is going to try and do it in one line up to the Can I Point mark. Yeah, definitely. You know, they'll be um, hoisting their reaching sails. There is uh, a little bit of east in this southerly breeze at the moment. So we'll see them go uh, battle down between Blackjack and InfoTrack. Uh, the, the two super maxis we have in the race down towards Can I Point down in Manly before they make their way beating back up around Shark Island back down to Kanai Bay, and then finally Shark Island before a little reach, a nice little reach actually across to Farm Cove at the finish line near the Opera House. And there's that one minute start, um, start preparatory signal. So we have less than one minute to go to the start. Blackjack and Infotrack taking the lured end option and Money Penny, Money Penny sorry, sitting themselves uh, nice and early, just seeing how Whisper approaches from behind. So info track at the, the leeward end of the line, the committee boat end, starter boat end owned by Blackjack at the moment and this is going to be fascinating. The info track slowing down a little bit as uh, they're just approaching the line, Blackjack bow down, this is a bit of a match racing move here, trying to just push info track a little bit closer to the line and uh, just see, you know, jostling for that position. So we do have Blackjack moving a little bit further down to Lewin. Inside five seconds to go. InfoTrack very close to the line there. Yeah, well, having to do a bit of a luff, Gordon. They had to run up the line there, and I think Blackjack takes the honours. Exactly what they wanted. So the timing not quite there. And also, Whisper getting a good start with Money Penny at the starter boat end. Yeah, so uh, Whisper, this... Uh, 
furthest to windward, which is a good position for them, being a little bit smaller than the Money Penny. Uh, so they'd be really happy with that position. They all have uh, just their reaching sales up. There's, as I mentioned earlier, there is a little bit of east in this breeze, so it's making it more of a tighter reach than any sort of downwind. InfoTrack deploying, uh, deploying earlier than Blackjack. They did have to do a bit of a laugh, but you can see InfoTrack just bow down towards Blackjack, who is very powered up at the moment. They've got maximum main sheet up, um, main sail up, sorry. Initially, Blackjack did have a reef in their sail. However, they, they shook that out as the breeze eased out throughout the minutes before the race. Mark Bradford said that um, you, you could probably liken it to a Formula One race where um, InfoTrack is faster in the straights, but being more agile, and lighter and manoeuvrable, Blackjack is going to do better in the corners of the Formula One race. But at the moment, there's not a lot between them. They're both sailing at uh, equal speed as we go past Bradley's head. And, you know, there are, there are quite a few spectator boats out on the harbour this afternoon, even the Manly Ferry joining in. Uh, so it's really tricky work for these tacticians to, to navigate their way throughout this uh, tricky wind, but also, you know, plenty of other land and, and all sorts of things that are uh, in the way in Sydney Harbour. So, you know, it is always a great day on, out on the harbour and we're seeing that so far as we make our way down to Canai Point. And there's David Griffiths Whisper, the Judal Brokaw 62 footer and she's to windward of the other three boats at the moment about 30 meters to leeward we have money penny and up the front at the moment it's info track trailing blackjack by just more than one and a half boat lengths yeah, and these two smaller boats are doing a, a great job of holding into these 100-foot super maxis. They're, you know, less than 30 feet or 30 feet less than the 100-footers, and they're they're holding in really nicely. You can see everyone stacked on the back, a little way from uh, Matt Stanter at the back of the boat on Whisper. Uh, I know that he enjoyed the race at the Cabbage Tree Island, and uh, you know is enjoying his first big boat day. Uh, here at the Grinders Coffee Solar's Big Boat Challenge. Yeah, just watching the start of that uh, Cabbage Tree Island race, it was InfoTrack who, who won the start there, uh, but Blackjack's been able to reverse the roles here in the Solar's Big Boat Challenge. And uh, InfoTrack had a little bit of a problem. I think they were a bit concerned about the sandbar just north of the Sow and Pigs on the Western Channel, and they had to didn't quite time their attack, and that's where Blackjack was able to sneak through and, and lead going up to Cabbage Tree Island. Yeah, and you can see, you know, there, there's not much in them here on the harbour this afternoon. There's, you know, less than a boat length, thinking of these, these boats are 100 feet long, but there's really not much in it. Once we do get past, you know, the, the headlands up here and the, the water opens up, we might see a little bit of a change in breeze conditions um, and sea swell as well. You know, that's suddenly bringing a, a nice suddenly swell up the harbour, making it another little interesting ride. But it's all going to happen down at that bottom mark at Canai Point, um, where they're going to make a big turn and head back towards us. So the race has been in progress for just over four minutes at the moment. And uh, it's Blackjack leading away from InfoTrack. Um, you know, really quite flat water in this harbour. There will be a little bit more swell as we make our way down into Sour and Pigs. But beautiful reaching conditions, prime powerful conditions. So they are seeing some great top speeds as we make our way down the harbour. Uh, the Money Penny has just extended a little bit out from underneath the Whisper, but it's getting closer between InfoTrack and Blackjack as the breeze settles a little bit. Um, you know, this, this south easterly breeze is pulsing. Um, InfoTrack trying to force Blackjack up a little bit further up to the harbour. You can see that there's, you know, less than a boat length now. A real battle of tactics here. Tom Slingsby, the Olympic gold medalist on board Blackjack calling the tactics Chris Nicholson info track and we're just seeing Money Penny here we've actually um, got an Olympic silver medalist in Nina Curtis on the Money Penny and I know Nina very well we sailed together at the London Olympics so she's um, you know really excited to be sailing uh, doing some offshore sailing again a Volvo around the world ocean racer as well and what a boat to be on board. She looks gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, I, I was lucky enough to call that, uh, that final race of all, yours, Olivia, along with Lucinda Witte. And uh, you girls did a magnificent job in that London Olympics. But what a battle we have going on up front here. A battle royale with Blackjack just holding a slight advantage. But now InfoTrack looking for an inside lane to lure it. 
Yeah, so InfoTrack did force, a, a, you know, force Blackjack's hand a little bit there, taking them a little bit further to windward, just seeing how they were going to respond if they came up and sailed a bit of a hotter angle. Uh, then, you know, if a track let them off of the hook a little bit and they've now deployed that sail, you know, keeping that out there means they've got a little bit more sail area. Um, and you can see the, the bow down as they, uh, as Blackjack moves into that sound area. Info track keeping a little more to the, the western shore and very wary of that sandbar, uh, which caused them problems at the start of the Cabbage Tree Island race. So it's a, just a drag race up this first leg to the Canoe Point rounding mark. Then we'll come back down around Shark Island, back up to Can I Point again, around Shark Island, and then to the finish off Farm Cove near the Opera House. One thing that's really interesting, Gordon, is some of the crews that are on board these 100 foot super maxis, quite often we have a lot of internationals come and join us for the race, and um, you know, the Rolex Sydney Hobart as well, this being a prep, prep, preparatory race for them. But really, it's majority of Australians or Australian based sailors that are getting this opportunity to sail these 100 footers. So um, we've got the likes on InfoTrack. We've got Ty Oxley, um, who's been there for a while, Mitch, Mitch White, um, Mustafa Ingham, Bradshaw Kellett, uh, Sam Newton, who is um, an 18 foot skiff JJ Giltnan winner, America's Cup winner. Um, everything and sail gp winner anything winner at the moment um, along with some younger sailors so charlie wyatt is um used to be a 49er sailor and is now an 18 foot skiff sailor um, he sailed on scallywag as well but now you know he's getting his opportunity on info track which is great to see taking a right hand turn around this can i point mark and the margin's only a matter of 10 seconds <laughs> but you've got blackjack rounding the mark first and as they approach the north headland, they will need to go for attack. But, yeah, they're going to want to do it pretty quickly because InfoTrack, if they get a little sniff and get their bow forward, then the race could really be open. So it's a, going to be a tactical decision for InfoTrack to continue on past Blackjack's line so that they've got some clear air and can really attack Blackjack on the way back. Now we have the fun and games on the uh, the camera cat going into the seaway. And uh, what, metre and a half? Yeah, so this metre and a half swell is, is making it interesting for the yachts as well. We're looking at InfoTrack going for attack just to windward of that Blackjack line, giving them a little bit more opportunity uh, to, to attack, as I said. But also uh, just settle down after that rounding. Make sure that everyone's settled in and up on the rail for the next upwind. So Blackjack has sailed an impeccable race so far, Liv. They haven't put a foot wrong. And InfoTrack just trying to stay in contact, as they did, hung in there in the Cabbage Tree Island race and eventually were able to overtake uh, with the transition in the breeze. Yeah, they are very opposite boats. Um, you know, we saw, we could see that from the footage even, just seeing the, the sheer size difference. Um, even though they're both 100 feet long, one's a lot skinnier in Blackjack and InfoTrack being a um, quite a little bit wider, meaning that they're, uh, they've both got different advantages in different conditions. Blackjack just nailed that start, and that's where it really um, came out for them in that first run, or tight reach, I should say, actually, uh, down to Canai Point. They put some pressure on Info Truck, who went into the line early, and that gave Blackjack a real advantage. So Money Penny uh, back in third place. We can see her in the background um, ahead of Whisper. Just the, the four big boats in this year's race, but the two Super Maxis having a ding dong go and Blackjack determined to turn the tables on InfoTrack. InfoTrack was first out the heads last year. Yeah, it's something I know that they're aiming for again this year. Um, it's, you know, it is a bit of an honours to, to take that uh, first out of the heads line. Uh, and it's suited to InfoTrack in these summer conditions where, you know, there is quite a bit of pressure on us, on, on, on the harbour. It means that they can just accelerate away and do minimal manoeuvres, sail around the outside and uh, get some, some great uh, manoeuvres as they head out to sea before they turn right. Now, InfoTrack's really held into Blackjack here across the, uh, across the sound. Uh, Blackjack's still uh, probably two to three boat lengths ahead, uh, which is, you know, between 10 and 15 seconds, depending on, on the breeze conditions. So it's a classic two-boat war in the 2020 Grinders Coffee Solus Big Boat Race. Blackjack still holding the aces at the moment, but InfoTrack is sticking. They're not going anywhere, and they're only uh, probably uh, one and a half boat lengths behind at the moment. 
Yeah, it's a great battle um, battle here, Gordon. You know, um, it's it's such a great day to be out on the harbour when it is flexing their muddle, muscles and, and getting a, a, a bit of a rip around Sydney Harbour. They don't often get this opportunity. You can see that uh, some of the, the bowmen are just setting up for the next manoeuvre as they make their way around Shark Island. But you can see weight up on the rail. You can see the flowing locks of Charlie Wyatt, one of the young guns on board, uh, info track, and then Blackjack all the way um, just having everyone up on that windward side, getting their bow out of the water and just skipping along. They did have bow modifications done last year, um, which which really helped them get that bow out of the water, similar to what Wild Oats 11 had uh, a couple of years earlier. So it is about, you know, maximising your efficiency on these boats and, and managing... Uh, you know, managing the power that you've got and using that crew work to really make those decisions and, and get around the racetrack in one piece. It's a very tight racetrack for the Grinders Coffee Solace Big Boat Challenge. And they're closing the gap on Blackjack. They are absolutely smashing through the, the chop at the moment. Oh, isn't she good? And my gosh, they've just accelerated as the breeze evened off a little bit. InfoTrack were able to hold on to a little bit more power, flatten their boat and just accelerate. They're now overlapped um, as they make their way up towards Nielsen Park. So as I just seeing InfoTrack and Blackjack almost getting bow even and bow on bow on top of each other here. Um, as the breeze lightens off again, you know, we're, we're down to, you know, eight knots on the harbour on the water, but up high there's a lot more wind. We're just seeing the boats um, lay, laying over just a little bit. Looking at the uh, the tacticians, they're looking under the mast, they're looking under the boom, having a look at where Blackjack is in comparison to where they are on info track and Blackjack doing the same, trying to hold on to their sails and, and their power to, to bring that in. And uh, it's the, this race is definitely not over. It looks like InfoTrack may be on lay to round Shark Island. So we are doing a right-hand turn. So we do have to go into Rose Bay and then do a full lap around Shark Island before heading back to Canai Point. Blackjack should be able to lay this too. So as soon as, as long as they can hold in and keep their air clear, they should be able to uh, hold on to the lead. Um, even though they look like bow even, it might be interesting where probably... 200 metres from Shark Island, so we're not far away from this rounding mark if they can hold in. So seeing the bowmen clipping up some uh, some new reaching sails on both InfoTrack and Blackjack. Uh, you know, Blackjack not actually being able to deploy them, the, that first downwind reach down to Canai Point. But, you know, there's so much load on these boats that uh, it really does take, you know, between 18 and 24 people to, to sail them. As we just looking to the right of the screen, Blackjack has had to tack. Um, so they've had to make a manoeuvre. They weren't able to lay Shark Island. So they've just had to do a tack there, um, giving InfoTrack a clear cross ahead of them. And InfoTrack, our race leaders for the 2020 Grinders Coffee Solis Big Boat Challenge so far on lap one. Just uh, two boat lengths between them at the moment and blackjack now trying to lay this mark yeah what a sight we've got a tacking jewel on sydney harbour between 200 foot super maxi so info track just getting a little bit further ahead there is a laid mark just to the left of the screen and we'll be approaching it in just a minute but blackjack and info track have to round this mark together there we have it info track have just rolled over the top of blackjack so it is info track rounding mark number two in the lead blackjack within one boat length behind them look at that so blackjack has already uh got their got their sail up to the top whereas i was hearing some uh communication on board info track uh to a little bit it needed a little bit of help in order to tighten that up so it's going to be the first to jive here uh to basically lead back to can i point Blackjack looking really fast on InfoTrack here. InfoTrack going for the first, the jibe first. So that's a tactical decision on their behalf with uh, Blackjack having to just come up and around uh, their InfoTrack stern and try and find some more wind. So it was a very composed move there by InfoTrack. The pressure was certainly on in those situations and that's where those little mistakes can happen that can cost you the race. It, they can definitely cost races, Gordon, um, especially when the 
you know, there are such high risks uh, if you don't stick to your manoeuvres and you don't stick to, uh, you know, what's going on in your role on board these boats. Each of these boats have a very clearly defined roster system as to who does what, who communicates to who, and what is actually important at that period in time. So they're very well rehearsed in what they need to do in those pressure situations. And just a little point on, on, on that very issue, Olivia. InfoTrack was out on the harbour yesterday going through those very pressure situations, not only at the start but in, in close tacking situations, just going through and preparing because their attitude is perfect preparation leads to perfect performance. And that's, that really is a great saying, you know, because that's what it's about. You can't just step onto these super maxis and think that you've got this handled. You really do need to have your, your crew really rehearsed as to where they're going to go if things go wrong and how they're going to problem solve it. There's pro it's all about problem solving and compromise when it comes to these high performance 100 foot super maxis because the risks are so high. So InfoTrack and Blackjack having their own private war but uh, we're going to try and move across and just see how Money Penny and Whisper are going because they're also having a good battle. Money Penny holding the, the trump card at the moment, but Whisper is hanging in there. Yeah, the Money Penny's done um, done well to not be too far behind the the hundred footers. But it, I'm looking at Whisper, who's just to the left of your screen, and they're not far behind the Money Penny. So, being you know eight feet shorter, um, the the Whisper than the Money Penny, it's it's a great feat for them, considering they were taking this as a training run, maybe putting up some sailors that weren't going to be tactically strong, uh, but just in order to prepare them for the great race come the Rolex Sydney Hobart on the 26th of December. And Sean Langman steering Money Penny. He's actually uh, took his uh, Team Australia 60-foot catamaran to Hobart and is inside the monohull record. I think they managed to get to Hobart in one day and six hours, which is a very soft fast journey over the 628 nautical miles but that catamaran now I believe is in Hong Kong. Just in behind Money Penny there as they're approaching the Shark Island mark. They do have to do the same course so they are going to have to wait before they uh, are able to jibe around Shark Island. So the Money Penny has some great 18 foot skiff sailors on board as well so we were talking about Charlie Wyatt being one of them on InfoTrack. On the Money Penny um, there's you know Eddie Powies from um, the UK and uh, Josh Perevsky, who's a New Zealander, Brett Van Munster, um, who uh, actually is the boat builder for the 18 foot skiffs as well, and um, a whole bunch of uh, really accomplished uh, sailors from, from Sydney, but also ones that have been here for a little while. Ed Powell is the son of, of David, as we mentioned, and David won the Sydney Hobart on Piccolo uh, from Lake Macquarie. So that Lake Macquarie heritage is just ingrained in uh, the Rolex Sydney Hobart yacht race and great to see him. David has uh, run some shipyards over uh, in the west coast of England and also in Turkey. David Griffith, this is a 62 footer. She's had a new keel and fin made for the 11 year old and a well-rounded crew as Olivia has mentioned including the great Australian sailing Hall of Famer Adrian Carlin. Yeah Adrian is uh, you know such an imp inspiration to so many young female sailors um, accomplishing so many uh, Rolex Sydney Hobarts wins trebles everything and she's uh, you know just a down-to-earth person and happy to have a chat so I've learned so much from her and it's awesome to see her um, always competing you know every week regardless of um, you know which boat it is she's always uh, giving it her best just looking at Sam Hunt uh, in charge of the crucial pit position here on Whisper Sam Hunt of the famous luxury Hunt leather brand they're going to try and keep Money Penny honest trying to cut the corner here and take a shorter course yeah you can see that they've just deployed whereas Money Penny is still uh, struggling a little bit um, with a wine glass in in that shoot so um, they have they're gonna have to try and get it out of there but they're every minute that they're spending sailing this direction they're actually getting closer and closer down towards that western shore meaning that they may have to just wrap it up anyway so good on the whisper for taking a tactical decision and staying a little bit further to the windward side and their crew looking looking across uh, I can see some smiling faces there not that you're wishing any ill will on the opposition but they've actually got a chance to sail through Money Penny now Griffiths the, the skipper the owner 
sailed 12 foot skiffs with Michael Coxon at Lane Cove and Hunters Hill. Coco was also David's sheet hand in the early 80s on the Sid Fisher sponsored Gateway Hotel. So the Whispers uh, put three, uh, you know, th three reaching sails. They're looking for extra power now, you know. <laughs> They did say they were going to be going through a couple of different sail changes that may not be um, as efficient or as positional um, well as they would like it to be, but they're really trying to get that crew work going. The Money Penny, a little bit further down, still struggling with that chute. It's quite a deep one for them, so they've just been able to get the wine glass out, but it is flogging very, very hard, taking them further and further to that western side. Three, four sails on Whisper and eight of the crew over the rail at the moment getting every little bit of inch of speed out of the boat at the moment as poor old Money Penny is having all sorts of problems over it on the western shore. Grinders Coffee Solace Big Boat Challenge puts pressures on crew. It puts a lot of pressure on your manoeuvres and your crew positioning because the harbour is so small. We don't have these races very often with, you know, big maxis and super maxis racing around the harbour all at once and getting these manoeuvres done really quickly. Yes, yeah, so Money Penny now seems to have sorted out her problem. So these two, the, the third and fourth boats, are going to have their own private war all the way to the finish, which is fantastic when you consider we've only got four boats in the big boat challenge. Third and fourth, uh, they're going at each other and they're going to be very tight. Money Penny just slightly bigger and info track and Blackjack heading towards the Cano Point mark. Looking at a cross up ahead of us, Gordon, um, down at Cano, Blackjack has done a tack in front of InfoTrack and has been able to sail a little bit um, further down in towards Manly. And I think that they might have taken the lead. So we're not able to get down there purely because of the conditions not allowing us to. Um, but it looks like Blackjack have been able to um, sail to lure of InfoTrack and get punch forward. Um, maybe InfoTrack having a few issues with that extra bit of uh, that extra reaching sail up that they had for a little bit longer. That's just me assuming though. Talk about a grandstand finish. Work their way back to Shark Island. So I've got myself all mixed up there, Gordon, because what's happened is InfoTrack has actually already tacked around the mark. Yes, yes. So they're coming back to us. And that's where I looked over and saw Blackjack uh, tacking in, in ahead of InfoTrack, but it was actually behind. Yes, it looks as though it's a, a lead of probably about a, a minute at the moment. InfoTrack leading Blackjack as they're now working back towards the eastern shore and the eastern channel of the Sowan Picks. Soon InfoTrack will clear uh, the heads back in the harbour proper. So around Shark Island, then the finish at Farm Cove. And our Aeromedia drone pilot, John O'Witty, uh, has certainly brought us some brilliant pictures here. We feel and like we're on board. We're on, we're on board, Whisper. Enjoy it. <laughs> Going for a ride with them. Michael Coxon with that familiar white floppy hat. He was sailing master on Alfa Romeo when she won the Sydney Hobart in 2009. But uh, every time he goes on board one of the, the big maxis, uh, they, if they don't win, something's wrong if Coco's on board. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to do with himself now that he stood down such a successful era at North Sales, 45 years. So the Whisper has uh, rolled the money penny after their um, not being able to hold on to as much uh, forward motion, they were going sideways a bit, the Money Penny. So the Whisper has decided to drop one of their reaching jibs and uh, just reduce their sail area and head back up towards the marks. So well done to Whisper and also Money Penny coming back. Money Penny will be trying to peg back that deficit after their mishap, and we're now going to be heading over to the big boys. When I said that lead was about a minute, it's probably about 40 seconds, but uh, certainly now in pole position to take line on his in the Grinders Coffee Solar's Big Boat Race. Just looked up at Blackjack and I've noticed that they've actually reduced their sail area. They've put a reef in uh, in their sails. So their skinnier hull, their skinnier hull being uh, not as much writing moment uh, outwards uh, than to info track. So they must have had to reduce their sail area. We're in about 22 knots at the moment, Gordon, and I can feel every knot of it. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, must, I, yeah, I love Sydney Harbour on, on a windy day. And we mentioned Brad Kellett. He was a foundation uh, graduate of the um, Youth Sailing Academy, famous around the world, really, the CYC's Youth Sailing Academy, and another famous graduate, Olivia Price. <laughs> 
Yeah, you know, the YSA is, is a great place to sail and, and be a part of. It teaches you not only sailing skills, but, um, you know, how to campaign and some other life skills. So, uh, you know, advocate uh, through and through. So we're just watching InfoTrack Round Steel Point for the last time before we head over towards Shark Island. Now, they've been able to stay a little, uh, the same distance really between Blackjack, another drag race uh, that we've had across here. They're going to start loading up with a little bit more pressure as we head into Rose Bay. So here we go. The breeze might have even gone a little bit further left uh, because InfoTrack looks to be laying Shark Island, so they might not even have to tack before we get to this Shark Island mark and turn right and head down towards Farm Cove. Looks like they're gonna be setting up a different sail on the bow. Uh, we do have a different angle, we're going a different way. There might be some jibes involved, something that we haven't really seen today uh, for the Big Boat Challenge yet. Uh, adding a little bit of complexity into it. Yes, well they've certainly opened up a, a nice lead over Blackjack now, but still, no mistakes. You, one little mistake, as we've mentioned, can, can open the door for Blackjack, who'll be ready to take advantage. Oh, I was just going to say one thing I know in between these two Super Maxis is they're not going to want to give each other an inch. They're going to want to take every opportunity that they can, and that's for the 628 nautical mile race down to Hobart as well. So it feels like we're in uh, maximum pressure for the day again, Gordon. I'd, I'd love to say that it's ease, but we're going to see, you know, a big powered up bear away as InfoTrack approaches the Shark Island mark um, and, and potentially even hoists a spinnaker or, or a, a separate sail to what they had up earlier. So the Blackjack still has their reef in their sail. Uh, wanting to reduce sail area as they've uh, come up on here and a reach, a tight reach. Well, it was. Um, I think the decision was made yesterday to carry their big uh, J2 foresail on that first drag down to Cano Point. And that's all about preparation and planning. Uh, Brad Kellett, the, the navigator, sized up the conditions and I think he's predicted them perfectly. And uh, after that little stutter at the start, Olivia, they're the ones who've really put their stamp on the race. Yeah, they've definitely taken it and run. Um, their crew work seems to be working really well, so uh, that's a, a real credit to them, especially having some, some new newbies on board uh, as part of the, the InfoTrack corporate day, uh, which is great. They do have professional sailors on board with internal communication systems talking to each other as they just get a beautiful bear away in there, a bit of uh, cavitation around the rudder but they're settling down and deploying. What a beautiful sight that is. She'll now stretch her legs on that final run down to Farm Cove and we'll look at the margin. It's going to be probably over a minute behind Blackjack. They wanted to do more tacks and more jibes today, but it became a drag race. And in those conditions, in these fresh conditions for InfoTrack, they were right up her alley. Yeah, the conditions just didn't allow uh, for Blackjack to do, to do her thing, um, but you know, every opportunity that they're out here on the water, uh, training around other boats and, and racing around other boats, they're learning new things about how, uh, you know, Blackjack and their own internal communication systems are working. Is there anything that needs to be done? Um, you know, having two two races over the last five days is a is a big advantage for them, especially going into the Rolex Sydney Hobart in two to three weeks time. Now, Olivia, what about um those watching who would like to join the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia, you might tell us about the the Pathway membership. Yeah, I've been you know I've been a member of the CYC for many years, and um, I love going down there. The environment, um, but the Pathway membership is a new wonderful way to enjoy the CYCA. So many of us love that sailing and racing environment, but unfortunately aren't able to belong to a club because of the costs. Um, so we'd love to have you on board. So what we've done is we've created a new low cost option as your pathway into membership with us. So the pathway members receive plenty of amazing benefits of belonging to the CYCA, but pay just half the entrance fee up front and half the annual subscription of full members. So make sure you find out some more information and join us to visit cyca.com.au slash pathway. We have missed our, our great mate Peter Shipway who was a foundation committee member of the Youth Sailing Academy and uh, he will be the voice of the Rolex Sydney Hobart on Channel 7 telecast on Boxing Day. You can see it live on 7 and on demand by the 7 Plus app and uh, comprehensive coverage of, of the race will continue through the Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race website. That's rolexsydneyhobart.com. 
and also the social media channels providing access to 24-hour race updates, photos and videos, yacht profiles and real-time race tracking. And it will culminate in live broadcasts of the line honours. The Aero Media camera cat will be down there to bring you just all those wonderful pictures we saw last year and your commentary with uh, Rupert McGuinness. And uh, we'll be down there for the finish to bring you all of that action. And uh, also looking at the, the battle then for the Tattersall Cup, the handicap honours. Um, and Matt Allen again looking for his third win. The Australian uh, sailing racer, ocean racer of the year. Matt Allen with Ichiban having won two of the last three on handicap. We'll be hopefully seeing this boat on your screen there as they make their way towards the finish line for the Grinders Coffee Solar Big Boat Challenge. So it's all info track. Christian Beck, Tony Mutter steering round the course superbly today. And the tactician, well, what do you say about him? Chris Nicholson, world renowned. He's won seven dinghy world titles, seven Volvo round the world races, and a two time Olympian in the 49er class, the skiff class in 2000 Sydney and 2004. What a, what a man to have in your brain's trust in the after deck, Chris uh, Nicholson. Oh, absolutely. I don't think you would really want anyone else. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's got experience across ocean racing, tactical racing, Olympic racing, all styles of sailing. So, um, you know, to be able to work your way through all this fleet and, and get there, then um, here they are at the end of the Grinders Coffee Solace Big Boat Challenge, and they're winning it. Yeah, fantastic effort by InfoTrack. Let's not forget she finished second behind Comanche last year across the line in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. They were first out the heads, and uh, Christian Beck and his crew are certainly relishing the moment as we go fast. Port Denison to the finish, just a matter of seconds now to the finishing line at Farm Cove for InfoTrack in the 2020 Grinders Coffee Solace Big Boat Challenge. We have Info track taking line on us in the Grinders Coffee Solus Big Boat Challenge. What a day! Live that uh, margin round Shark Island was 55 seconds in favour of Info Track, and um, I think Blackjack has certainly hasn't lost any more ground in that last dash, that last reach to the finishing line at Farm Cove, and they're about to cross. And another splendid performance by Blackjack uh, into second place. They kept the the heavier boat, the wider boat, honest in conditions that really didn't suit her. So what is going to be very interesting is to see how third and fourth are going. Money, Penny and Whisper, because they were having their own private battle. And uh, we, we saw Money, Penny have that, that problem with the, with the chute. Uh, they had a, a wine glass in the chute. They finally sorted it out, but it meant that Whisper was able to come through on the inside lane. And I'm just wondering how they're going now, because they seem to be pretty close together. They look really close together. They're both going around the Shark Island position at the moment. Um, I'm, I'd am i love to predict and say who's where, Gordon, but I really don't know. Uh, you know, initially we when we left them and caught up with the big Super Maxis on their way back to Shark Island that first time, it was Chinese Whisper that just rolled Manny Penny. Now, I'm just having a look as they peek, one of the boats peeks around uh, Shark Island. There's only about 20 seconds between them. Yeah, <laughs> and considering there's eight foot of difference between them, uh, you know, the Whisper being 62 foot and the Money Penny being 69 foot. So who is ever, whoever is leading around Shark Island here with uh, Money Penny and Whisper, there's no guarantee that boat's going to finish across the line in front of the other one because it'll be a last minute dash. But uh, there's, as I say, there's only 15 or 20 seconds between Money Penny and Whisper. From the looks of it, it looks like it's Whisper rounding that Shark Island just ahead of the Money Penny. Uh, the Money Penny's just had a new respray with a beautiful uh, deep racing green colour on her hull, uh, whereas the Whisper is more of a, a black colour, especially on the inside. So I'm thinking it's Whisper, and yes, it is the Whisper, the 62 footer rounding in third. And um, as we predicted, the margin is 20 seconds. <laughs> 20 seconds, so. Can Money Penny peg back Whisper in this final dash to Farm Co? So we can see the Whisper has deployed, um, you know, a, a, quite a big spinnaker here. Uh, you know, the, we were thinking that maybe they would put a, a reaching sail up, but looks like they're taking it on with everything that they've got. They've got to put a little bit more sail area up when comparing to the Money Penny because they are smaller. So that margin, you would say, um, is going to close. 
it should close, but at the moment, um, Money Penny doesn't have, they aren't um, deploying anything. Whereas the Whisper, and we heard from Coco earlier in the day, they want to try all their different sale, um, sale management and um, sale plans, plans. So they might have just done a, a, a bit of a different move here, maybe not tactical. Uh, we'll see where they end up. They are pointing down towards Mossman Bay, so they might have to do a bit of a drop <laughs> and, right. and come back up towards Farm Cove at the finish line. But I still think they'd like to finish in front of Money Penny. Yeah, once they looked at it, they probably made some decisions to say, you know what, let's go for it. Yeah. <laughs> Competitive, competitive souls on board each and every yacht out here today and it's really about taking that. It's not just about the line honours. We do have IRC handicaps for today. Um, I'm not sure exactly what they are, but I'm sure that the Whisper would be in for some great chance here. Yes, you'd say Whisper has to be in the box seat for um, handicap honours when you consider she's giving away 38 foot in length uh, to the Super Maxis. But yeah, she's carrying a, a big shoot down here and she's travelling along nicely. What sort of speed would you estimate, Olivia? Um, I'd say anywhere, you know, around 10, 12 to 15 knots at the moment. We're in uh, a little bit of a light patch, only about 18 uh, to 20 knots of breeze. There are There is a little bit more coming. You can see, um, you know, Ian McKillop on the pumps, uh, on those coffee grinders, really bringing it in. He's taking one for, it, for himself, whereas other people might share them. Big pressure as we come on here. Some great pressure coming from Double Bay, giving them a little bit of an extra boost. I see Michael Coxon's taken over the wheel Has for he? this final <laughs> sprint home. But they claim line honours in last year's Flinders Island and the Newcastle Bass Island races as part of the Audi Centre Sydney Blue Water Point score. And they also won Division O in the Noakes Sydney Gold Coast Yacht Race. And Griffin was fifth in January's Australian Yachting Championships. Yeah, they're holding nicely, I think. I think they've got enough up their sleeve to hold off Money Penny and uh, come home third across the line and probably taking the handicap prize. Yeah, we, you, you know, they, it would be uh, easy to assume that. You know, we're hoping for them because they've sailed such a great race. They've uh, really sailed tactically and, and well done to, to Coco. Uh, is is a, one of the chief decision makers on board there as well as you know the sailing master and decision maker in terms of the sails so uh, put put that after guard together and and they've put together a great race well how close are we getting on board here Gordon <laughs> it's um you know we can kind of even hear some of the some of the people on board uh, communicating to each other about the pressure and the load in the spinner car when to trim well done to the Aero Media team, getting us right in close here. I feel like I'm already on board, Whisper, for maybe the third or fourth time today. Well, that big spinnaker certainly paid off for them. They've opened up uh, that lead around Shark Island on Money Penny, and they've probably got just a few more hundred metres to the finish, maybe about five or six hundred metres to the finishing line off Farm Cove and just beyond Fort Denison. So beautiful images there. As we, uh, as we see the Chinese Whisper make their way to the finish, they may have to still drop that spinnaker. Looks like they're getting ready for something. Yep. Looks like they're getting ready for it. They're aiming down towards Kirribilli. We'll be able to almost be on board for this drop if we're able to stay here, which, which would be really fun. There we go. Blown the tack. Bowman's down the hatch, getting it down. And there you go, they're just doing their round up as they're going to go to windward of Fort Denison here and approach the finish line. It was a fun little run for them, giving their sails a bit of a shake out after probably not even being used for, for about 12 months or 11 and a half months, shall we say. So I'd say definitely David Griffiths has been on that wheel all the way. And, uh, <laughs> he's not letting go and he's going to take Whisper across in third place. And uh, yeah, as we say, the margin is going to be maybe anything up to 50 seconds yeah they have extended on that money penny yeah you know they've they kind of took this race as a training session and and really wanted to run with it do their thing so they've really sailed their own race uh, making the decision to jibe earlier at that shark island mark uh, that first time to to take that tactical advantage they'll just be wanting to cross this finish line in fourth a great day out on the harbor for them trialing some new things um, you know, new crew on board for this year's uh, Rolex Sydney Hobart after being renamed the Money Penny, how it was originally named after being the naval group for the last few years. Well, it's been a very fascinating day, a very satisfying day, I think, for, for all the crews, even though Money Penny um, 
finished fourth of the the big boats um, she certainly had some great moments out there well ladies and gentlemen uh, that concludes the cruising yacht club of australia's live stream of the solace big boat challenge brought to you by grinders coffee roasters special thanks to olivia price for her vivid expert commentary and also to the production team at aero media for the amazing visuals and special thanks to grinders coffee roasters for their brilliant support of the race and the live broadcast so for today's competing teams and the other 76 starters who will return to this magical playground on Boxing Day for the start of the 76th Rolex Sydney Hobart, a safe and very special nautical adventure to all. Gordon Bray signing off on behalf of Olivia Price and also for the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia.